Getting from point A to point B is a big part of life. Most of us have very expensive pieces of machinery sitting out on the verge, unused more than 90% of the time, just so we can go where we want, when we want. But things are about to change. Autonomous vehicles are coming, and things will never be the same again. If they are introduced properly, they're going to bring affordable, convenient transport for all, while helping to solve some major social problems. Some of us are already embracing the idea of driverless technology, but others are fearful and sceptical. This divided reaction is understandable, given that the huge potential of these vehicles is accompanied by a whole range of technical and social issues that have yet to be resolved. Each year, almost one and a half million people lose their lives on the world's roads. Almost all of that loss is the result of human error. We are flawed and fallible. We have limited attention spans, and we're easily distracted. By comparison, autonomous vehicles have 360-degree awareness 100% of the time. This video. Shows you a mocked-up, fun scenario of what the future of autonomous vehicles might look like. <laughs> Now you can see that in this future, we won't need traffic lights and we won't need stop signs. The vehicles can sense each other and other road users. Plus, they can talk to each other, so they merge perfectly. How many of us could drive with that degree of precision? Now there are multiple trials of autonomous vehicles happening here in Perth right now, and there are many, many trials happening all over the world. Millions of kilometres have already been driven by autonomous vehicles, and billions more have been simulated. Even in this early stage, where they're still working out the glitches in the technology. The crash per kilometre ratio for driverless vehicles is far below that of their conventional counterparts. We can look forward to the day when more than 1,000 lives are saved each year on Australian roads, and more than 30,000 hospitalisations are prevented every year. That represents a saving to the Australian economy of more than $16 billion annually, just from crash prevention alone. That's the tip of the iceberg of the benefits of autonomous vehicles. Even in the interim phase, where we're going to have human drivers sharing the roads with autonomous vehicles, we can expect dramatic improvements in traffic flows. This video is going to show you the results of real-world experiments where they have combined autonomous vehicles with human drivers. As you can see, the addition of just one vehicle, the one shown in red, smooths everything right out. Driverless cars don't tap the brakes like humans do. They can sense what is happening further down the queue, and they can avoid reacting unnecessarily. This means that our trip times will become shorter, and will produce fewer emissions. In addition, with rapid improvements in battery technology, it's expected that autonomous vehicles will be electric, and that will further reduce emissions. Our cities will look and feel much different in the world of autonomous vehicles. Driverless cars don't need to park. Yet, around a quarter of CBD space in cities is dedicated to parking. What are we going to do with all that extra space? Perhaps the high-rise car parks can become more inner-city living. The on-road parking can become more access for pedestrians and cyclists. Just imagine how much safer cyclists are going to be when all the vehicles around them are aware of their presence and monitoring them continuously to avoid collisions. Even <laughs> there's a cyclist. <laughs> Even our homes are going to be structurally different when we no longer need garages and carports because we have access to door-to-door -door shared autonomous services. There are some amongst us who will benefit even more from driverless technology. In particular, our elderly and disabled 
will have much greater mobility, independence and quality of life. This is very important, given the rapid ageing of our population. Today, around one in seven of us is aged 65 years or older. By the end of the century, that will have nearly doubled to one in four. This represents a massive public health challenge that autonomous vehicles are going to help us with. Think also of those on very low incomes who tend to live more on the outskirts of cities, further away from employment precincts. The availability of affordable, convenient transport will increase their access to employment and therefore improve work equity. Now, thinking even more laterally about the potential benefits of autonomous vehicles, in the future, there'll be no such thing as a getaway car. <laughs> Anyone who wishes to commit a crime will need to do so within walking, running or cycling distance to avoid leaving a record of their escape. But this brings us to some important potential downsides of autonomous vehicles. There will be privacy implications when all of our trips are documented, Although, for those of us who use Google Maps and other kinds of location-based apps, we've already given away our privacy. <laughs> there will be major social implications when those who are in driving-related occupations no longer have jobs, and they'll need assistance to migrate to other forms of employment. Will we become an even more overweight nation when we have access to door-to-door -door services and we take fewer steps in our day? How are we going to make up the shortfall in organs available for transplant once road crashes are no longer an important source of supply? <laughs> How will we bond with our teenagers when we can't hold them captive in the car? <laughs> the extent to which autonomous vehicles reach their potential to make the world a better place is going to be largely determined by the ownership models that emerge. If we all decide that we want our own personal driverless car that drives us to work, returns home empty because why pay for parking if you don't need to, comes and collects us and takes us home again, we've just made congestion a whole lot worse rather than better. The best possible scenario is for us to relinquish this idea of personal car ownership and instead get on board with the idea of sharing our transport. This could be in the form of ride-sharing services or autonomous forms of public transport like shuttles, buses, trains and trams. Now, the younger amongst us are probably likely to embrace this idea more quickly. Many of them already choose not to hold a driver's license and they're already regular users of ride-sharing services. The rest of us may take a little longer to adjust. So when is this all going to happen? In many ways, it's already here. New cars have lots of autonomous features. Adaptive cruise control, lane keeping, blind spot monitoring, automatic braking, automatic parking, oncoming traffic detection. Who's really driving those cars? In cities such as um, Phoenix and Detroit in the US, they already have autonomous taxi services. The predictions are that by 2040, three-quarters of vehicles will be fully automated. Hopefully, most of us here today will be around to see that. Australians are rapid adopters of technology, so things may happen even faster here. And that's a good thing, because of all the lives that will be saved and the growing independence for our elderly and disabled. But the speed with which autonomous vehicles are arriving means that we need to get our skates on. Transport needs to be seen as a right and not as a privilege. That means that we need to look at the introduction of autonomous vehicles through the lens of social welfare and not through profit maximisation, which is what will happen if the private sector leads the charge. Our governments need to actively work towards cities that are designed around people and not cars. And we need to have lots and lots of conversations about what this new world could and should look like and how we can make it happen. Thank you very much.